Hello one and all and welcome to the Math Magic Show. In this one we're going to find the limit as x approaches 0 of 5x over tangent x. The question though is, is how do I know that I should proceed one way rather than some other way? It can be a tricky thing obviously. You always want to check for some condition to see what's happening. By for example trying to plug in that x equals 0 itself. When I do that here what I end up with is the following. 5 times 0 over tangent of 0 that is 0 over 0, which is D and E, so it does not exist. When you have that kind of condition that tells you either you try L'Hopital, but in this case, I'm going to, because I have trig functions, I am not going to use L'Hopital, I'm going to do this without L'Hopital by rewriting it in a way that allows me to find the limit. And I, don't, and I don't have that condition 0 over 0 anymore. So as a first possible step, what you may do is the following, take a look. You would rewrite the tangent function in the bottom there as sine over cosine. So that would now give you this 5x over sine x cosine x. What you want to do is just apply keep change flip, the usual fraction rule. So that's going to give you the next step that will look like this. You're going to end up with limit as x approaches 0 of 5x times cosine x over sine x. So again, to go from 3 to 4, you do keep change flip. At the next stage, at step 5, that is, you can rearrange things this way. Take a look. The limit of 5x multiplying cosine x over sine x that 5 that you see right here, you can pull that outside. And then you can group this x with the sine x into x over sine x and the cosine can be put in front of it. All of this is based on a simple commutative rule of multiplication. At the next point to transition to 6, I'm going to do this, take a look. It's going to look like the following. Because at step 5 I have a limit of a product, meaning cosine multiplying x over sine x. I can rewrite this on step 6 as cosine x and multiplying the limit of x over sine x. That's a basic property of limits. We're getting close here. The next stage, take a look. For example, up at step 7, I need to now review some perhaps well-established limits because I'm going to have to make use of those here. So one of those is the fact that the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x is equal to 1. There's another version that says the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. Both of these are equal to 1, okay? Another thing that we have to observe is that back at step 6, I had the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x. Well, that can limit can be now found directly. So what I mean is I end up with limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x. I can replace x with 0 directly. That's going to give me cosine of 0, which is 1. So now I know back at step 6, limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x. I know that's equal to 1. I know that the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x is equal to 1. Which means that now I just multiply everything together. So take a look. At the end, it just multiplies. So I'm going to have the 5 right here. That 5 that comes from back at step 6. Remember, we had a 5 in front of the limit. So that becomes this 5, the last line. The limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x, that's 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x, that's also equal to 1. So just multiply all of these values together and you get a value of 5. And that then becomes the value of the limit. And that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in another mathematical adventure. <laughs>